If you're wondering where I've been since the last time I saw you, I'll give you a hint. Just doing the laundry. That's what I do in the summer. I do four things in the summer. Well, actually, now I do five. But the first four are I do laundry, I fix hot dogs, I swim, do laundry, fix hot dogs, swim, vacuum, and the newest thing I do is I shop. But not even because I want to shop, I shop for others because my, um, I have three children that are going to be living in dorms this coming up here. And for some reason that just like hit me today. And people need computers and they need sheets and they need this, that, and the other. And it is stressing me out. Stressing me out. Almost as much as like everything else has been stressing me out. Raise your hand if you've been stressed out in the last 24 hours. Shoo wee. It's actually been sort of a relief to just, oh, and I drive people. Thank you, Rebecca. Ding, ding, ding. For you, I drive people. Yes, I do. Um, today, let's see what's happening at our house today. We have two people now at tennis camp at you. You, I'm not going to tell y'all where because last week I, sh I shared something about Blair, my daughter. And I was like, she's... Um, She's in, flown into Salt Lake City, and she doesn't have her phone. Well, I saw there were like a thousand comments. So I was like, look at that. that. That post I did was so popular, and I was sort of, you know, kind of proud of myself. Well, then I was like, I wonder what the thousand comments were. And I thought they would be like, you have such, you know, a nice child, blah, blah, blah. No, no. They were like, you've told everybody in the world where your daughter is. And now she's going to end up on Dateline. I was like, I said that she was in Salt Lake City. Like, Salt Lake City, it's not exactly like the Hardys on 11th Avenue. I hate pants that have these things in them. But maybe it's good because then maybe you can just hang them on regular hangers. So actually, maybe I don't hate them. I just thought I did. Because they were, I, I didn't understand them misunderstood pants. I got these pants that TJ Maxx and I really like them. True. Um, kind of kind of flowy. Like wider than my body one leg. <laughs> it, it's hot as balls outside. I would just like to make just like this put that out there for anybody that's wondering if it's hot. If you're somewhere that's not hot, I'd like to move. Because there's a reason people spend their summers in the mountains. And I mean, I love the beach, but I bet you could, I bet the mountains could grow on you. So but wait, why was I saying that about my daughter? Oh, that's why I'm not telling you where she's at camp because I'm sure there's somebody out there that's ready to gobble her up. What's happening this week? So I have two at tennis camp. I have an unnamed location. I have my oldest son is at another camp. He's a counselor. And that's exciting. And then Amos, my littlest person, is here with me. And we were going to go to Edenton this week back home and his stomach was kind of bothering him. And then he did not want to go back home at all. So I was like, okay, well, we're going to stay here. So we're here. Hot as hell in Charleston. Oh, oh, I bet South Carolina hot. Um, so anyway, we decided to stay here. So we're just going to be uh, hanging out and going to the pool. And I don't know. I don't know what exactly. Cleaning up, doing the laundry, vacuuming, and fixing hot dogs, and shopping. Those are the things I'm going to be doing. You already named the tennis camp. Wow. 
Good luck. I'm trying to find her. That's all I got to say. All I got to say, in this weekend, we have uh, my brother and sister-in-law coming and my in-laws. Because my husband is getting ready to turn 50. And I thought, well, this would be a fun way to do his family. You know? Is this your house at the beach? It looks different. Really? Yeah. It's it. Does it look, maybe it looks cleaner or dirtier. It's kind of a toss up most of the time. Did you get your AC fixed? Yes. Yes, I did. I got my AC fixed. Yep. Yep. For that tiny little piece of plastic up there was, yep. Thousands of dollars because, you know, I love to spend money on things that don't matter. Okay, go ahead. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. President Trump was shot yesterday. So I wake up. Um, I took a nap yesterday. I've been taking, I've been very tired and I can't decide if I'm tired because I'm like really tired. I have an autoimmune thing or if I'm exhausted with the summer tired, they're kind of similar. So this morning I woke up at nine and I was like, it was like, I wake up and there's a to-do list and all this crap I need to do. And then I'm like, I'm just going back to sleep. So I woke up at 12 today. But anyway, did something happen to Blair? No, nothing happened to Blair. So yesterday I took a nap. We had gone to Beaufort to take Blair. Blair's birthday is this week and she'll be at camp. And um, so I thought, well, I'll take her to Beaufort and we'll do a little bit of shopping, right? Well, we get over to Beaufort and she's almost 15. And she was standing like this close to me at all times. And I was like, where do you... Um, where do you want to go? And she would say this. I don't care. Okay. What would you like to eat? I don't care. Um, do you want to go in there? Whatever. I was going nuts. It, I was like, I have come over here to Beaufort. Am I depressed? I don't think so. I think I just need a ton of alcohol or something. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. So I don't, I don't care. Was she sad? No, no, no. She was not sad. I finally said, why? Are you acting like this? We have come to Beaufort to take you to look for things for your birthday. And she does this, all of you that feel. <laughs> I was just messing with you. I was like, well, you're about to get a big smack on the fanny. <laughs> I've had it. It was purposeful. So we get back yesterday and I'm like, I've got to take a nap. It's 198 degrees. Maybe it's hitting you that she's going to leave. No, that's not it. Mm. No, it is not making me sad that she's going to leave. In fact, it helps me think she's going to leave because I would like to miss her. She was just gone two weeks and she was back within 10 minutes and she was chastising me for taking her clothes out of her suitcase and washing them because as she said, you're just going to have to put that stuff back in, in the suitcase. It was like, you've lost your ever-loving aunt. All my mom and dad are in Beaufort, Gary. So anyway, autoimmune problem will exhaust you. Yes, I miss my IVIG, blah, la 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 la. You're overwhelmed. <laughs> I don't know what I am. I have a bad attitude. So she says... We get back, um, we get back, 
I'm like, I'm going to take a nap. My husband was already taking a nap. I lay down. It's like 630. I wake up and I come downstairs and she sprawled out on this sofa right here, my laundry, where I put my laundry sofa. She sprawled out there like this. And I come down the stairs and I say, um, I don't even say anything, actually. I just come down and I'm like, oh, where's dad? She goes, did you know that Trump got killed? It's like, what, what are you talking about? She said, yep, he got shot and he's dead. I was like, I'm going to tell you something right now. I have a real problem with you. I've just taken a nap and now you're saying some crap like this. Well, I'm not kidding. It's all over the news. I was like, okay, I'm going to look at the news. And if President Trump is still alive, you owe me a hundred dollars. Well, I heard it. So I get the thing out and I'm like, well, he has a bloody ear. President Trump was shot, but he's not dead. Oh, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you don't just walk around saying people are dead for no reason. And now since he's not dead, I, I had, it's hard for me to even feel bad that he was shot because I'm so relieved he's not dead. I'd hate for somebody to be dead. Mainly because I'd hate to hear my husband complaining until the election. Can you imagine the cluster it would be? But yes, no one should go to a political rally and get shot. Not even Mark Robinson. You know, I at least want to live in a country. Well, now, if it were Putin or Kim Jong-un, that's different because they're not playing fair. So I wouldn't mind if they got shot, but you should be able to go to a political rally as a candidate and you should be able to go as a constituent and you should be able to spend the day and cheer and hoorah and carry on for whoever you want to win and not worry about getting shot. I remember when I was in high school, I had this English history teacher. Her name was Lynn Ellis. Miss Ellis, if you're still out there. And um, Miss Ellis, we got extra credit if we went to the Bill Clinton rally in Winston-Salem. And it never even occurred to me that you might have been shot. Yes, so a husband and father was killed at the rally, which is um, terrible. And as his wife said, he saved their lives because he got in front of them. And I don't know if the bullet that hit Trump's ear then killed the firefighter or not. I, um, there were a lot of, it sounded like a lot of bullets. It sounded like a lot of bullets. Um, this kid should be able to go to school and not be shot too. If there's anywhere that you shouldn't be shot, even above political rallies, it's school, you know? Um, I think we've all kind of gotten, or at least I have, like, you know, now you can't give anybody the finger in traffic because you could get shot. And I think if you got shot in traffic and somebody said, yeah, I gave him the finger, you'd be like, well, you deserved it. So um, I think you have to really be careful and think about what you're, who you're raising and what happened. Why did this 20 year old with a degree from the community college, a registered Republican, why did he show up at a political rally and start shooting? You know, why? It just doesn't, you know, it doesn't make sense. Shooter got off eight rounds, and then the sniper shot the shooter. Seven or eight shots. Well, you could hear it, and then at the tail end, it was like there was one final shot, you know? Um, I, I don't know. It felt like years ago when you, you had an election, and it was maybe Bill Clinton. What, who do you run against? George Bush. And... Um, 
you would be like, I don't know. It didn't feel like there was so much animosity and hatred. And if there was, I was too young and didn't know about it. You know, I was raised by people that were Republicans. Um, they love some Reagan. I mean, I have a letter framed from Ronald Reagan to my grandparents, and it's a letter um, from he and Nancy congratulating them on their um, 50th wedding anniversary. You know. Mm. Oh, thank you, Cena. Cena said that was the sniper returning fire. Ah. Well, that's inter interesting. Um, but you know, it's interesting too, that Reagan, right? Wasn't it Reagan? Reagan wasn't for gun, gun laws until he got shot. So once he got shot, he was like, uh, we got to get rid of some of these weapons that nobody really should have unless they're in the military. Um, so it took Reagan getting shot. And at the time, <laughs> this is sort of funny. Who are the gun people? The, um, you know, the gun people, they have the big gun meetings and they love guns. The big lobbying group. I can't remember because my brain is, is, is shot. But they actually wanted there to be restrictions because at the time, the, the NRA, thank you, Barbara, the Black Panthers were a pretty active group. And the Black Panthers were wandering around with their, you know, assault weapons. And the NRA no like the Black people to have the weapons. <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't know why that tickles me. It's like, we don't mind if the rednecks have the weapons on the back of their trucks. But if the Black people get the weapons, we scared of that especially the Black Panthers. <laughs> so really what we need to do is just get a bunch of Black Panthers to pop back out with their weapons, and then the NRA will change their mind again. He was bullied and a loner. You know, nobody goes out and shoots somebody that doesn't have, um, that has a perfect life, I would say, you know? Um, I think that's a pretty fair assessment, you know? Trump kept saying what? Well, you know, I'd, I'd like to think that you could, you remember in Las Vegas or you're in a movie theater, think of all the places that, um, guns have, you know, been around. That was just wrong. Well, I don't know if it's wrong or not. It's just true. When the Black Panthers were an active group, the NRA was against gun rights of those weapons. So that is rooted in history. That's not um, like my opinion. That's just true. So I you know, it, but it, it, it is funny to me. It's ironic that it's a problem, you know, now or a problem depending on who has the, the guns. Bullied every single day at school. Well, I, I don't know what we'll know. I don't know if we'll ever know anything. Um, I know that other countries don't have the problems we do, you know, with this kind of stuff. Um, Santa Fe High School. Yeah. Yeah. Better mental health. We can't even agree to disagree anymore. No unity. You know, if there's one thing that we, um, if there's one thing that we, to me, have to be able to do as a country is that we have to be able to talk.
talk. And we have to be able to say, well, you know what? You like so-and-so and I like so-and-so. Do you remember it was a years ago, it was like a Michelob light commercial and they had like, let's say they had a white dude who hated transgender people. And so he's talking to a transgender person and they kind of, these people come in and tell you like, these are the people I have problems with. Well, then they put them together. And the idea was that they're going to sit down in a bar and they're going to have a beer and they're going to discuss. And it was a real experiment. And it really did at the end, it was like, well, you know, we're fine. And I think sometimes we have these screens and it's really easy to, to put down or to hate certain people or to um, claim that, you know, so-and-so is a sinner or they're going to hell or God doesn't like that. And it's like, at some point, come say it to my face, come talk to me, come share. And to me, if you have taken the time to think and vote, then I respect who you vote for. I mean, do you realize I have a son and he's 10 and at 18, he is going to be allowed to vote. <laughs> I don't, that actually was not a good conversation to go. <laughs> because, oh golly, they get him being able to vote. Um, a miracle. So somebody said there was a miracle yesterday and Trump wasn't killed. And I would say that um, if it had been me and a bullet had grazed, some people are saying, well, it's not a miracle. I can argue both sides of the story. If it had been me and I was minding my own beeswax today at the McDonald's drive through and a bullet came by and took off the top of my ear, my mother would tell people that it was a miracle I wasn't killed. I'd absolutely believe that with all my heart. Now, when my brother died of cancer, I would hear people say, um, well, they didn't really say anything, but then I would hear about other people who had cancer and they got better, right? And they lived. And you would hear this, like, God healed them and they were saved and they, you know, all these things. And I would think, well, that doesn't make sense because that would mean that God loved that person more than he loved my brother. So when somebody said, well, if God saved Trump, why didn't he save the school children from a shooting or why this, that, and the other? You know, I think, um, I think we maybe can have both, right? Can we have miracles, but also have terrible tragedies? Yeah. Yeah, I think we can. Um, so anyway, I think you know, the first thing you can do is go on Facebook or Instagram or whatever and watch and talk and discuss, but don't like, you don't have to fight, you know, you can just say, you know what? I don't know. I wish that the world was fair and it's not, you know, I think we live in a world where we have, we can make choices, um, which is, amazing that we can, but the grand plan, you know, I think that we all have the ability to make choices and why didn't the firefighter have a miracle? That's right. Because some bad guy made a choice to shoot a gun, you know, and somebody else was killed. Um, so I, I think it's, it's just always being aware of how we talk and how it affects other people. But again, talking about it, you know, talking about it. Um, the way I see it is most of us get a lot of saves, you know, and we don't even know it. Like we, how many times 
did you have a miracle and you just never even paid attention? You know, what about the time you're in the car and you stopped for a minute and a car ran a red light in front of you? Or maybe the time you were at your house and you lost your freaking keys and you had to go upstairs to look for the keys and you get in the car and you go somewhere and there's a terrible accident in front of you and it could have been you. You know, all those saves, all those miracles, I think we all get. Um, but that's just the way it is. And maybe this for Trump will be, I can't imagine getting shot um, and not being killed and not kind of reevaluating myself, you know, or having a perspective that would be helpful and useful, you know, and on a variety, on a number of levels. Um, a number of levels. After the Parkland shooting, when President Trump met with several of um, the victims' families, Trump left and said, we're going to have gun reform. And um, he made, you can go back and watch the, the press conference he had. And he said, you know, I don't care about the NRA. I don't care what anybody says about whatever. We're not having this anymore. We're, we're just, we're not going to do this. And the NRA ended up at the White House the next day. And then it was like back to, you know, down. So maybe at some point, maybe this is, maybe this is that. When it's your time, it's your time. You know, I don't really get that whole, it's your time, it's your time. So if I'm sitting here right now and somebody comes by and shoots me, was it my time? Because I think my time is not for a long time. My time is not somebody taking a choice. Like God didn't ordain just because God is all knowing doesn't mean God decides. Adrian is going to die at 49 and a half, eating a shrimp burger, drinking her McDonald's water. No, it's not my time. Anyway, it's just my opinion. Not that it matters much, but anyway. Uh, subscribers, see you in the morning for coffee, and we will have more of an in-depth um, conversation about this because I do think it's really, really important to talk and discuss and to listen. And other people might have opinions that we don't have, and maybe we have opinions, and maybe our opinions ebb and flow with our own lives, you know? Um I think it's important that we listen and talk. What do I know? Just some old lady, you know? Old lady. Old mom Sunday night trying to survive the summer with a person with autism and three teenagers. What time subscriber chat? 9 a.m. Nine times, as Ferris Bueller says. See you at 9 a.m. And come in with the questions and the thoughts. We'll have some coffee and solve the world's problems.